go forward to say that we have basis sets with only valence up to valence is not good enough today. You cannot publish any paper with this actually, all right. So, it is very important to realize this. You must use what are called polarization functions. So, that is very important polarization function. So, what is polarization? This is adding basis functions first, first of course, to the contracted functions. When I say basis functions, it means it is Slater or CGF. Please, please read Slater for CGF, okay, because they are identical, all right. It is just that we are not actually using Slater, so I do not want to write Slater. It is a contracted Gaussian. So, adding more basis functions beyond the valence angular momentum. So, that is important. So, for example, for carbon, that would mean adding d functions, 3d. I am calling it 3d, but it does not matter, 3 is not important, d functions. So, adding 3d fun d functions is important for carbon because the valence angular momentum is p, it stops at p, you have to add one more, at least one more. You can even have two more, there is no reason to have one more. People use one 3d functions, typically one 3d function but you can use two 3D functions. People are using F, 4F and so on. Many, many functions today they are using. So, they become high, highly accurate basis set. Even though carbon does not have D and F, they use basis functions simply because these are functions to expand the molecular orbitals. It has nothing to do with actual carbon. Remember, this contracted Gaussian or A mu, these are the A mu's, okay. My basis set was only to expand the molecular orbitals, and the philosophy was more the merrier anyway. So, there is no reason to stop at P. Okay. Then each of these are now again going to be expanded in terms of primitive Gaussian. So, again expand in terms. So, philosophy is same. I hope you understand. So, all again these are going to be D type primitive Gaussian, F type primitive Gaussian. So, exactly the same philosophy. And you keep doing the integral calculations and so on. So, for hydrogen, for example, I am going to use 2p, maybe only one of them or maybe two, does not matter. I can also use d, 3d, f and so on, even for hydrogen. Note again the total energy is not important. I, I had said this in, uh, in one day. The total energy may change in only 10th digit, that is not important, it is the difference energy. What is the difference energy changing? That is important. So, that is why these large basis sets are required. When you, when you do a ground minus excited state, let us say, I mean I, I have not told you how to calculate excited state yet, but let us say that you know that difference even if the total energy is only in 8, 9 digit, that difference can be significantly important for spectroscopic accuracy. So, if you have, if you have missing something in the 6th digit, then there can be an error which is of the spectroscopic accuracy. So, percentage error by itself in total energy is not important. So, typical example is that if I have 1 percent error in let us say E excited minus E ground and each of them has only 1 percent error, then you do not know which way the error is. The error is not systematic. So, when I take the difference, the error will multiply, okay. So, that is the, the real problem and very often it happens. Let us say I have a 1000 kilojoules, some number, I am subtracting that with 998 kilojoules and my result is 2 kilojoules and that is what I am saying hydrogen bond interaction, right. This 1000 has a 1 percent error. This is also 1 percent error. So, the error is 10 kilojoules, right. This is 9 or 10 kilojoules. How can we explain 2 kilojoules with the error bar of 10 kilojoules, right. It is ridiculous. So, that is essentially the problem that people want to reduce that error bar from 1 percent to 0.1 percent. And if you want to do that, then you need this large number of basis functions. And actually that will directly take us to the beyond Hartree fog, this particular discussion 
So, I want to tell that the basis set has the same feeling why I want to go beyond Hartree Fock because Hartree Fock is good actually otherwise. So, these basis sets are good, but people have to use larger and larger basis sets. These are called the polarized basis set. Uh, for da Huzinaga Dunning, there is a name for this. They would call originally they would call DZVP. Just P will be used. So, Huzinaga Dunning, this is plus uh, polarization. They will say DZV2P, two polarization, two D functions. Then you can have D, have F, G, and so on. They will have different nomenclature. I think it is not important. In the case of the uh, Popol's basis, they call it 631G D, P. And D, P is very clear. For carbon and uh, first row atom D, for hydrogen P. That is what it means. Okay, so this is very often also called as 631G star star. Many many different nomenclatures exist. If I have a star star, it means polarization on carbon, polarization on hydrogen, both. If I have only star, it means only polarization on carbon or first row atom, not on hydrogen. So hydrogen is included. So you might have seen 61G star. So this is polarization. And usually there are only one polarization, only on first row atom. So these are typically a single polarization functions. These bases are typically single polarization function, but today there are bases which are more polarization function. Each of them has more D, F, P, D, everything has come. So you can imagine, I mean you can, your imagination is your limit. Okay, I mean in this case, basis said your imagination is the limit. So for everything I cannot give even nomenclature. Yes. More, yeah, higher and more number anyway. So your results will be better. More S orbital, that is also done, that is also done. More flexibility. So the point is, point is what he is asking a good question is that at this point I have two choices. I can have double zeta valence or triple zeta valence or I can have double zeta valence polarization. So let us say you have only two choices. I want to make this triple zeta valence. Of course, you understand what is triple zeta valence. I have one more S function, one more P function or should I add a polarization? If you have, if you do both that is ideal, but if you cannot do both, then there is a question of balance. So many feel that instead of just going on this direction, you should first go in this direction, then go in this direction. So obviously TZVP would be very good. Again, Popol will call it differently, but you understand the philosophy. TZVP will be very good. So you go from DZV to DZVP, then come to TZVP. Okay, and then of course you can have a quadruple zeta valence. But if you do quadruple zeta valence, you must use two polarization. And even more, after that you may use FG for carbon slowly. So there is a balance and that is why I said basis set is an art than a science because you have to balance. What is the minimum number by which you can have a very good, very balanced basis set? Should I only augment the valence? Should I augment polarization? How many polarization functions? Should I augment only one angular momentum higher when I say beyond or should I go two angular momentum? Then for each one how many? So that is why I said basis set imagination is the limit. So you can keep doing whatever playing, whatever you want to do, but you have to understand at the at the end, your computer is the limit. Your imagination can have a much higher limit, but your computer will limit you much earlier, right? So, so, <laughs> so then what do you do? You scale down your imagination, right? Because imagination there is no upper bound, right? I mean, you are going to go on, go on, but then computer will give you a physical upper bound. So now you scale down within the upper bound. Now you have lots of options in your imaginations. You find out what is the best. That is an art. So I mean you can just think as big as possible. Oh, I can think of 1000, 10,000. So what is art about it? The art is to manage this within the computer limit. How do I choose a basis set which will fit my computer and yet give a satisfactory results? That is art. That is what I said. So people have found 
that instead of just going double zeta, quadruple zeta, you know quadruple zeta is also possible. You also start populating this, otherwise you will get unbalanced basis set and the results will not be good. Of course, this result will be better than this result, this result will be better than this result. Question is comparison between this and this and that is not a apple to apple comparison, that is a problem because I am adding not one function of the same type. So, that is why I am saying apple to apple com comparison is this to this, not this to this. This to this is an apple type comparison. So, obviously, this will be higher, better result than this. So, I may ask simple questions. Huh? Two basis said which will give lower energy. Better means lower energy, remember. Okay, that you should be able to tell. What is an apple to apple comparison? You should be able to tell from the basis set. Ah, this will be an apple to orange comparison. So, I cannot tell orange is better or apple, depends on your health. Uh, depends on what kind of problem you have, all right. So, that is one. The second type that is also very important, I must tell, is yes, is uh, apart from polarization, yes, please tell. Yeah, polarization is essentially because you are you are going beyond one angular momentum, so it just polarizes the electron density. That is how the polarization came, the word polarization came. Yes, so that is what I said, no valence. Well, I mean at this point, it, at, no, 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 at this point it does not matter whether I call it 2s or 3s, s is s finally. So, I am saying number of s type, I just said 2s, 2s prime to give you a comfort that it is a valence split. When I said triple zeta valence, you do not care whether now it has gone to 3s or 4s, but the angular momentum is more important, that is why I am giving a different name, when you change your angular momentum, yes. One. Zero. Zero means. Oh, that means you do not have. Ah, I think 2 1 will be better. Difference is that you are adding a more another s function. No? That is always better than just expanding this one s function by more number of primitive. That is my gut feeling. Again, it is an apple to orange comparison. But that is my gut feeling. So, essentially you are saying is it double zeta better or single zeta? Single zeta, single zeta with more primitives or double zeta with little less, I would say double zeta is better with the same number of total number of primitives. Yeah, I have different, but double zeta is, you, you give more flexibility on the valence that is always better, okay, than single zeta. In fact, you will see that today we never use single zeta basis set. Today we do not use. I will tell you one single zeta basis as Popol had, but we do not use it. Since the discussion has come up, let me discuss that. That is the simplest basis set that we have STO3G or STONG in general. This STO is Slater type orbital. So, in STO3G, when I use, I actually use single zeta 1s, 2s, 2p, end for carbon, hydrogen 1s. And each of these each of these are expanded in terms of 3 primitive laws. So, please understand what is STO 3G. So, if it is STO NG, N primitive laws. But the number of atomic orbitals used are exactly what you said, single zeta. So, if I do a methane calculation in STO 3G, then you have 1, 2, actually it is good that you ask this question. You have expanded my ability to ask questions in the mid sem exam. <laughs> I am not going to discuss STO. So, what is your methane number of STO 3G? 1, 2, 5, 9, right? 4 hydrogen. So, methane has 9 in STO 3G. Actually, STO NG, 3 is immaterial. Total number of molecular orbital that will be generated. And I will I will actually say what is the total number of molecular orbital that will be generated your dimension that is more important because if you get confused with amu and primitive and contracted gaussian the total number will depend on number of contracted gaussian because that is goes into your fock matrix dimension right amu number of amu which are my con so that will be methane so these are single zeta but practically today this is outdated in old days people used to do sto 3g sto 2g is also used but 3g is the minimum and pretty bad basis set 
and nobody will publish any paper with this. So, minimum is double zeta, minimum is double zeta with at least single polarization, ok. Each of the dp you can have 2d, 2p. So, you can have also a double polarization which will be double polarization which will be 2d, 2p. You can have polarization beyond d and p, f, g. So, those are what are called augmented basis. I am not going to go into that. There is something called augmented basis, correlation consistent basis, aug, cc, pv, dz. You know, there are basis sets which are known as augmented correlation consistent pv, dz. Very, very complicated basis sets which are actually augment, which are actually valence double zeta, no doubt but correlation consistent and augmented. So, what they do depending on how they augment it, how many PV, double zeta, triple zeta, quadruple zeta, they balance the basis set. So, just as I told you, if they are using triple zeta, they would probably use minimum polarization, one polarization. If they use quadruple zeta, they will use two polarization and one more of the other higher angular momentum. So, for example, carbon, if I am using Q, Z, V, then this is my S and P then I will have two D functions, one F functions. So, so when I say augmented C, C, Q, Z, uh, P, V, Q, Z, automatically D and F will come, that, that people now know. So, these are all a part of the, part of the nomenclature, okay. Because people have realized, do not only go for valence, as soon as you go for valence, include one more polarization of D and one more of the higher angular momentum. But obviously, D number should be always more than F number. So, if I do carbon with a 1 D function and 2 F function, that is bad. Because if you have to tell what is contributes to carbon more than D or F, then of course, answer is D first, then F. So, again that is a balance, okay. So, never use 1 D, 2 F. So, I hope you understand. So, these kind of basis sets are not just the valence double zeta. This augmented essentially takes care and correlation consistent text where how the d, f, g angular momentum will come, they keep on coming, all right. So, I think beyond the point it is not really interesting because you have to just know the nomenclature and you know and people have used standard nomenclature, you cannot change it now, all right. You can argue but you cannot change it because everybody uses that. So, you just have to know this is really like information, more of information. As long as you understand the philosophy, you should be happy. But the, but, but one more function that I must uh, add before I complete the basis set is what are called the diffuse functions. So, for many, many, many problems I need to add apart from all these something called diffuse functions. Now, what is a diffuse function? Diffuse function is a function which decays very, very slowly. That means, let us say hydrogen have a diffuse function, the function is diffused over a large range. So, the, the function will actually decay, if I start from here, it will decay very, very slowly. So, at a large r, sorry, at a large r, the density, there will be still some density. Now, if you look at Slater function or Gaussian function, what determines either r minus r a or, you know, does not matter whether 1 or 2, what will determine the diffuse nature of the function? Can you tell me? Alpha. alpha. So, alpha should be high or low? No, it should be low. To have a good diffuse function, alpha should be low, right? So, all you do is to add diffuse functions, typically one or two diffuse function and usually we add diffuse function which are valence. That is usually good enough. Do not have to add, for carbon you add only S and P. That is good enough. Do not have to add D, okay? Valence diffuse functions, maybe one, maybe one in number. Again, they can, they would be Gaussian of course, with very low exponent. Maybe even one will do, but at least it is required for many problems, where particularly if you want to calculate electron affinity, where the, uh, the anion, the electron negative, um, the electron has a effect very large distance from the nuclei, it is very important. Many times even excitation energies, okay, many times even hydrogen bond which are diffused over a long range. So, that is chemistry. You require a low exponent. How low? Alpha can be typically 0 0.01, as low as that. So, let us say I use a primitive Gaussian of this kind. 
So, this alpha could be typically 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.02 that low to have a. So, it is also important today to add diffuse function and a typical diffuse basis set is 631 g plus plus d comma p. What does this mean now? You have one diffuse function for carbon and hydrogen plus one set of polarization function d comma p. Many times people use diffuse function only for the heavier atoms. So, for methane they will use only for carbon not for hydrogen, but you can use the actually typically people use for both carbon and hydrogen only valence. So, you have a one additional s carbon, one additional p carbon okay, and one additional hydrogen s plus a d function for carbon, p function for hydrogen. So, now if I ask you what is the total number of molecular orbitals for 631 g plus plus d comma p, can you calculate for methane? It is just fun. Repeat the calculation. Now you understand. Yes. Huh? Now I am now using in addition diffuse functions. So what is the total number? One one diffuse function. One contracted Gaussian. I mean they are actually not even contracted. They are actually just primitive. So contraction is also one in number, but that is not important. I am asking you what is the total number of atomic orbitals. So, add to this, add to this 1 d function, 1 p function, right? I mean, you call it 3 d or whatever you want to call it, 2 p plus 1 set of s and p diffuse, 1 set of s function diffuse for hydrogen, right? So, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, right? 7, 10, 13 and then you have a d function let us say typically 5, 18 for carbon. So, I had you remember I had 9 originally, I have used 1, 4, 13 and 1 d function 5, 18 and for hydrogen I have 1, 2, 5, 1, 6. So, 6 into 4, 24 plus 18, 42 function. Okay. So, if you do the same methane calculation, you can have 9 functions for STO 3G. Uh, to 30, 42 function for 631 g plus plus d comma p. The d comma p is often also called star star, you know star plus star star, but people had problem. You cannot use too many, too many uh, superscript. So, that is when people changed that let me write the polarization in bracket. Originally, when diffuse was, diffuse is written with plus plus. If 1 plus means only carbon. If it is plus plus means carbon and hydrogen. Okay, so, that is the rule. I mean you can extend that to ammonia whatever you know. So, that is the rule and I think these diffuse functions are also very important to add so that you get a chemically accurate results. Okay. Huh? Oh, because, because many, many of the problems the electron density stays very, very far away from the nuclei. Gaussian remembers I told you decays very rapidly. So, it does not capture the uh, real problem. So, that is the reason I use a Gaussian with a low diffuse function. Even, even Slater with a same diffuse function will go even further, but it is square. So, at least you need in the Gaussian diffuse function. So, that is the basic philosophy. Okay, yeah, I do not want to, uh, I think it's, I have already overstepped the time limit. I do not want to bore you with basis set. Uh, <laughs> I mean, to a point it is interesting, beyond a point it is boring. Uh, as long as you understood the philosophy, rest is boring. If I now start to give you d i and alpha i numbers, it is absolutely boring. Those who are interested can look up the literature. There is a basis set uh, library. You just go and Google basis set library. You will get that uh, basis set library from various uh, programs and everything, every expansion coefficient, contraction coefficients are given. You just need to know how to read them. There is a format. So, just know how to read them. But, the, but I think I just wanted to tell you the philosophy of the basis set before I close this part. And I think now what we will do is to actually go beyond Hartree Fock. But before I do, do that, we still have to discuss some properties of Hartree Fock. And one of the important properties that I will start after the mid-sem exam is the Brillouin's theorem, which is a very important theorem, just like Uppmann's, which comes out of Hartree Fock. And that will simplify the later discussion.
So, but, but I think to an extent, to a large extent, the technical discussion of heart refog is over. There will be some other discussions of heart refog which will actually highlight the deficiencies of heart refog, okay, to show that why should we go beyond heart refog. Yeah, you have a problem in number count, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe I made a mistake, that is possible. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 7, 1 diffuse function, 5, 12, then you have 18, 18, 18. For hydrogen, I have 1, 2, 5, 6. So, 18 plus uh, 6 into 4, that is 42. Is that okay? Yeah. I mean, I could make a mistake, it is not a problem. Do not worry about it. But as I mean, again, understanding is important. The number count, I can make a mistake. I do not have to give exam. <laughs> but in exam, you cannot make mistake, huh, incidentally. Okay. Ah. We do, we do. Yeah. Plus plus essentially means yes. We do. I mean, it depends. If I if I tell you don't add, don't add. I mean, I will be very, very clear in the exam, in the paper. I will tell you what you are doing. I just want you to understand capture and DD. I mean, I'm not I'm not going to test you what is a better basis set. Okay, that I'm not going to test. All right. So what I will do after the mid-sem exam to talk about deficiencies of heart epoch and one of the two very important deficiency I'm going to talk about is of course in the calculation of difference energies, and yeah, and and how the uh, the uh, when you stretch a bond, how does the heart epoch behave? In fact, it does not behave properly even for hydrogen molecule. We are talked of H2 molecule. So, I am going to give an example and that is where I will start that how you get a wrong potential energy surface even for hydrogen molecule with a heart refox, single closed shell heart refox. So, that will be my starting point. So, good, I have told good things about heart refox till now. I have to start with some bad things. The last good thing that I must tell about heart refox is that heart refox recovers 95 to 97 percent of total energy. That is that's beautiful actually, but as I told you, it is not good enough. And we have now discussed Hartree Fogg only at a geometry, at a fixed geometry, at an equilibrium geometry, Hartree Fogg works well. If you stress the geometry many times, Hartree Fogg does not do well. So, one of the examples that I will start with is hydrogen, H2 molecule, how, how, why it is bad, I will try to explain the physics. And of course, the two, 3 to 5 percent error is too much of an error for a difference energy. And, and then, then I will talk of Brillouin's theorem and then eventually how to improve the heart reform. Brillouin's theorem will be a part, a technical theorem to improve the heart reform, uh, which, will be, which will aid in improving the heart reform. And that, that will be the rest of the mid sem exam, after the mid sem exam. So, first one or two lectures will be still on heart reform and after that post heart reform theories. So, we will see post heart reform theory again, sky is the limit we will see as much as we can do, all right. So, suddenly I want to do perturbation theory, MP2, etc., etc., and CI, these two things and probably a little bit of couple clusters and DFT, okay. Now, as you know that there is a little bit of potpourri. So, after mid sem, you know, I have to, I have to tell you that I cannot go very systematically in depth for each chapters because otherwise, you know, if I go only perturbation, the one possibility is I do only perturbation and CI and forget about the rest which I think is not good idea today. So, so I have to and we have, we have another 18 to 20 lectures after mid sem. So, we have total about 40 lectures. So, I have finished 18 lectures, but with a little bit of uh, one and a half lectures sometimes is almost like 19, 20. So, it is okay. So, we have really reached the halfway mark today, uh, okay. And, and uh, the rest half we will do uh, as good as possible that we can do. And many of the times the course actually is to end here. I mean, but I, I am pushing the frontiers a little bit more. I actually want to do a little bit of couple cluster, to be honest, okay, because that is the gold standard of quantum chemistry today, okay. So, we will see how we can do that you know, in quick time. I have to also introduce a technique called second quantization, which I have not done, all right. So, I will formally introduce anti-commutation rules and all that. So, you can see there is a lot to do and I have to somehow make sure so, I will collect my thoughts, what are the best things to bring in this one, one week break. And uh, the exam, I suppose is happening on Monday, since you did not come back to me with any alternative date. 
So, it stays on Monday first thing at 8.30 in the morning okay and uh, somebody else somebody else will normally I, I stay during the end sem exam, but uh, mid sem I try to avoid and uh, somebody else will come and supervise. Of course, my TAs will be there. I hope I will be available in telephone. If there is any problem, just call me, all right, because I have to go to Chennai on that day, but little bit in the afternoon I am going. So, morning I will be available, okay, and I will tell uh, some some faculty for formally be there. So, Monday 8.30 in the morning, is that right? 8.30 to 10.30, is it 2 hours? 2 hours, okay. And which room here only? That is not told yet? You have not seen? None of you have seen which room? But uh, at least you have to see. <laughs> they will take the question papers there. No? <laughs> and I have to tell the faculty which room it is. Alright, so yeah, okay, fine.